start with you. I mean, people will know your work from from poetry and and everything, but what was it like really bringing this your poetry into this very lyrical, very spiritual, uh, very beautifully shot film and making that transition and bringing your 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 work and your art into into film. Well, first off, thank you for those kind words you said about the film. And it was honestly a very organic process. Um, my poetry informed the photographs I took that of family members and of landscapes in the South that then informed the film. And so it was, again, a very organic process. And I wrote a lot more pages of the script than ultimately landed in the final version. But they're all pages, similar to what you recently said, you know, about um, the editing. They're all pages I needed to write to get to what the final script is. And so it's been a, a very fluid process, you know, but the exact one that I needed for this film. I mean, I can only imagine that just practically there's just so many more people involved and, and everything, you know, for, separate from the, um, from the artistic goals of it and trying to really play with the form. But, you know, what were some of your challenges just as a, a first time filmmaker? Mm. Everything, no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> um, You know, casting, like Mac, there's four different versions of Mac, you know, and so casting multiple people to play one role, that was very much so a challenge. Um, finding locations that worked for the film, like my Maria Altamirano, the, the producer who was with me from day one on this project, we went on countless location scouts looking for, because for me, place is very linked. Just as a filmmaker, like I need to be on the ground, sitting in the spaces, finding them. And so we went on countless location scouts. And so, yes, finding the right faces in the right places, I, I think were the biggest challenges, but it really landed. Like even when things felt like they were going the wrong way or weren't working, oftentimes it unveiled itself to be going into a way that ended up being a blessing. I guess what for you really inspired the particular generational themes of of, of this film, I mean, you know, in, in finding the particular landscapes and the motions that you're, that you're aiming to convey, you know, as opposed to, yeah, some of your prior work. Mm. Yeah, the title of the film comes from a conversation I had with my grandma around the practice of eating clay dirt. And the poem is different than the film, but that conversation I had with her, uh, is, I've always sat with it. And so when I was writing the script, I returned to, because I had versions of the script that didn't have the aspect of clay dirt in the film. And <coughs> when I was writing the script and started to incorporate, I talked to her some more and started to incorporate that thread into the project. The, I mean, the generational aspect was always there, but it really began to really sing for me when I added, like it felt like a, a loose thread a thread that connected it all, like that needed to be there. And you know, there are photographs from my grandma's photo albums of family members on the walls of some of the scenes, some of Charlene's family photos. And so it's, it's in so many ways speaking to that and in some ways that I didn't even see when I was doing it, but I can see now that I'm at this stage. Well, I mean, for all the actors really, I mean, so there was like a traditional script or um, how, how, how was it, you know, working in this, environment and you know working across generations and times and you know finding yourself in this in this space i mean uh charlene let's start with you i mean th this is is this your first performance your first role in movies yes. and yeah so, and, and unexpected you know like yeah. i came to this um through raven like i've known raven for a decade now and uh, it's an idea that we just started exploring together. Um, so really, I mean, it's one of the first scripts <laughs> I've read. So, you know, I really don't have anything. The 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 themes, the um, the things the script was exploring, the multi-generational aspects. I mean, these are all things that we talk about in our relationship, things that we have communicated through. Um, on our in our poems um, and just in conversations when we're not writing, you know. So it was for me. It was easy, fairly easy to just pick up on um, finding my way. And I, it, I liked the experiments that, that made it fun, you know. Um, that there was so much expansion um, and, and and room to explore and grow. Um, so it was really attractive. Chris and Sheila, for you, you know, what how did this 
experience compared to other projects you've worked on? Well, Raven's a black woman. Not a lot of those voices are being treasured in the way that they've been able to treasure her and protect her throughout this process. Raven is the compassion. You have no idea if you read, when I read the script, I went, oh, I'll be safe on this set mm. because the words were so safe and specific on the page that I was like, one, if she even wants anything to do with me, cause I know my energy is way different than hers. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if I am lucky enough to get to do this, I know that this will change my perspective on the industry and it has. Mm. So it was a bit of medicine. I think, you know, you spoke specifically about working on something that has different timelines. And I, I mean, there's only one of my character in the film, um, but I really enjoy that I am just one part of what is a much larger tapestry. And there's this sort of, it's an ensemble piece and there's a shared responsibility amongst all of us. And um, as much as in, in some ways it can be a shame when you don't get to meet everybody, you know, in the different timelines on the shoot. Um, I liked that. I, I, there was a real intrigue for me when it came to watching the film the first time as well, to see what happened for the future, um, you know, characters. My character's more in the past. Um, yeah, I like that. I like that we all kind of have our little vignette. We have our section and we, we just take care of that. And then once you guys stitch it together, it becomes this beautiful thing that we all contributed to. I mean, it sounds like there was a lot of specificity on the page that really spoke to you lyrically. I mean, having seen the film, are you surprised at how it came together and is realized in, in this way? I don't feel like I'm surprised because I read the script, you know, and I realized that Raven is a special voice. And so I knew that I don't have the brain to create what the end result would be. I'm from a different system, you know. It, I, I've been doing so many linear things written by the same type of human being. So I never even cared about the result. I was just so grateful for the process and I knew the result would be special. Yeah. What are the attributes that, that Raven brings as a director in terms of, you know, grounding you in some of her, the themes that, that she's, you know, and um, the the poetry that she's going for? Yeah. What, what are some of the, the aspects that, um, that how she works uh, as a filmmaker? I could go all day. So I'm like, no, I'll just be quiet. You knew it was going to be. I'm like, no, I'm going to just let you talk. We know how I feel. Compassion, <laughs> patience, ease. There's never a rushing moment. You know what I mean? We see movies and we know the process. Rush, 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 make it fast, 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 sit down, wait. If you ask Raven a question, which I've actually learned from Raven, she, there's a, what do you think about this? Hmm. There's a true consideration of a point of view so that she can give you a true answer at every moment. And it's never, there's always enough time. There was always enough time to be to, to bring our all. There was no fight in daylight. It was like, we'll get it when we get it. And just trust me. And that kind of mutual trust from all, you know, the whole list on the sheet is remarkable. That's magical, man. And now I'm gonna talk. Literally the first line of the movie, yeah, slow it down, you know. So yeah. You know, bet, you know. So how about for, for you two? Well, piggybacking off of the questions, I feel like the questions Raven asks, me, you know, was asking me and pulling us to side and asking us were really helping, like really helped guide me into the next take and to um, through through the scenes that we were doing. So, um, yeah, just the and and that it was a space of inquiry that we were mm -hmm. wandering together about, you know, what what about this possibility, you know? And so there again, expansion, space, um, play. And the questions aren't always easy, you know, which means like, no, take your time. You'll come up with the answer. That's cool, man. Yeah. It's cool. And to do that as a writer director is, and it has an added layer because you're working with your own text. There's, I, I always find writer directors so fascinating because you have to be close enough to the text to be inside it in the way that nobody else is because it's your vision, mm -hmm. but also be distant enough as a director to be able to give over the text to other people, to collaborate with you. Um, it's a very fine balance. Not everyone gets it right. 
the Raven could have been. Yo, my heart. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ask another thing about it. <laughs> uh, what sort of advice and collaboration did you get from from Barry Jenkins and the Pastel team? Because I can see, you know, his fingerprints in some ways on this, but you know, I, I can imagine why it spoke to him. But what was some of the the collaboration you had with with his team? Yeah, the, the entire team at Pastel, Barry Jenkins, Adela Romanski, and Mark Zariak, they're amazing. Not only amazing filmmakers, but just beautiful humans as well. And they really, you know, pushed me to lean into my voice, you know? Don't lean into what I'm interested in as a filmmaker. They're not afraid of that. They're excited by the risk I want to take. And so to lean into those. And I'm so grateful that they provided shelter for me to allow this project, these collaborations to bloom. Cause that's what it was. I felt safe under the umbrella, you know, that they were gonna protect the vision as well as Maria Altamirano, who I previously mentioned was like on the project from day one. I always felt that the vision was protected. I wanted to ask about the, the hug scene in the film. What was what was it like shooting that moment? Just it's, it's, it goes on and, and just breathes for so long and, um, I don't know. I mean, that day, it was the second to last day that we were on it was set. Halloween. Yeah, it was Halloween, you know. Um, and it, it, for me, I mean, it's kind of like, with a lot of this, it's kind of like a blur. <laughs> like, mm. I'm like, did I dream this? Mm. But I mean, it was really, it was just, we were really just present, you know, we were really just with one another and felt supported and held and had, again, the space to be able to just sit in. The things that came up and um, as we were working through the the the, t the scene and the take, so I was just so grateful for the trust that in like with Reggie Helms Jr. who plays Wood in the film, uh, or the older version of Wood and Charlene, and us in that scene, and that they allowed themselves to go there. You know, like really, just with every take, it was just like a, a little longer, a little longer, a little longer, and. When we got in the edit and it was a 10 minute scene, I'm like, it's a 10 minute scene. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't want to be cut down. Um, and I'm just, I mean, first time, you know, you know, it's, it's really, it's, I, again, I'm grateful for the trust and that they allowed themselves to uh, sit inside of that moment. Well, I mean, Raven, now that you've made your debut, I mean, do you still want to work within film and see how, how else you can push the form? What, what are you hoping to do for your next project? Yeah, I do. I'm interested in TV. I'm interested in television. Um, I still want to, you know, write on the page. I, yeah, I like to work within many mediums. And so I'm excited uh, to finally, you know, yeah, to, to have space to like create beyond Dirt Roads, you know. And I'm so, ex of course, living with Dirt Roads and excited to be welcomed into the world. But it is exciting to think about what's next. And there are plenty of mediums that I'm excited to explore with.